Well, I'm excited about being here today, and uh, I have a word I want to share with you tonight, uh, this morning, I should say. It's not tonight. It seems like tonight in here, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's daytime, I think. <laughs> and, um, but we do have a word we want to share with you tonight, and we want to go to the word of the Lord tonight. And uh, let me see. I think I have the power here today. Let's see if I... Hey, it does work. Okay, great. This morning, I want to ask you the question, are you lit? Are you lit? Now, in some circles, you ask that question, you can get in trouble. Because it may mean something else, right? Now, I know you all are holy and sanctified and serve the Lord all your lives, but... Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, I'm lit now. Woo, I felt it. Ooh. And, uh, <laughs> praise God. Uh, like I said, I know most of you, if not all of you, you know, sanctified, holy all your lives. But some of us weren't that way. And when you talked about getting lit, it has a different connotation to it, right? Uh, but we're not talking about that lit. We're talking about, are we lit with the, the light of the Lord? Amen? Amen. So I want to go with you today to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to look at chapter 5. But we're going to read some scripture a little lengthy today. But uh, you'll see it on the, on the screen, in fact. Chapter 5, verses 8 through 18 is where we're going to go. And uh, as soon as I can bring it up on this thing, technology is a wonderful thing. Here we go. It says, For once we were in darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. Somebody say, Now. Now. Amen. So live as people of the light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thought, thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Instead, be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit wants to light you up today. Yes. He wants to light you up. Tell your neighbor next to him, God's going to light you up. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. You know, we live in a world that's full of darkness, right? I mean, you don't have to go very far to understand that. I mean, some of the crazy things that you hear on the television, we got cannibals among us now, zombies walking around here. You know, that's crazy stuff, man. That's stuff that comes right out of just the pit of hell, isn't it? Guys eating people's faces off, you know, and, and uh, we were in Florida during that time, and when, when we first heard about it, we were like, okay, all right, yeah, zombie, okay, here we go, zombie apocalypse going on, you know. They're going to be walking the, the earth, and we have to be shooting people in the head to try to kill them, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. And, uh, but no, it's true, they said it's true. Well, until I saw it on the news, it was hard to believe. Because, I mean, who phantoms that, jumping on top of a guy and eating his face, eating his eye, you know, Mm, well, this is good. Oh, my God, what is this? A meatball? No, it's not a meatball. It's an eyeball. Then you hear it happened to some college student, you know, some guy, you know, his college buddy, his roommate. You be careful with your college roommates. When I went to college, they were crazy, but they weren't that crazy, you know. <laughs> but it just talks up, you know, it just lets you know about darkness. We, we live in a dark world. Now, it's interesting because the first words that that it recorded from God is, let there be light. And light was. Something that never existed began to exist just because God said it. So it's always been God's will from the very beginning of time that light will, would shine, that light should shine. Why? Because God knows what darkness can do. When there is darkness in the world, when there's darkness in a family, when there's darkness in a home, when there's darkness in society, the Lord knows exactly what's going to happen. And it ain't pretty. 
That's why God wants to light the world up. Because darkness suffocates. Darkness brings death and destruction to people's life. So the Lord's first words was, let there be light. And God is still saying that today. He says, we are the light of the world. We are city on a hill. Hallelujah. That's what we ought to be. So opportunities that arise like yesterday to be able to be at that rally for life is an opportunity to let your light what? Shine. To let the world know that the church is alive and well in Middletown. Because at one time it wasn't. And I can testify to that. That this light of this church was snuffed out for a while. But thank God that God had spoken eons ago, ages ago, that in Middletown, Middletown, in Middletown area, North Middletown or West Kingsburg, whatever they call this nowadays, they have so many different names for this place. But in this area, the light will shine. And he called this church into being for that very reason, to be able to be a light on a hill, to be a city on a hill that cannot be hid. And so God's will has always been for light to shine because we live in this darkness. So as we read this scripture, as you take a look at it, I, I brought this out of the New Living Translation. As you begin to read through this particular scripture, there's a few things that I want to just call your attention to that are important for us. Number one, we can conclude that we, some, say, some, say we, we, are no longer in darkness. Amen. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. We are not creatures of the darkness. For those of you who lived in the city, and especially in the cities, whether it was Brooklyn or whether it was Bronx or wherever else, you remember when we were growing up, uh, you come home at night and you turn on the light and... <laughs> <laughs> the creatures of the dark. By name of Cuca. In Spanish, Cuca. You know, cockroaches. They're running and scurrying all over the place because they're creatures of the darkness. You know they come from hell. <laughs> they, cockroaches are not of the light. They're of the darkness. And they scatter because they thrive in darkness in dark, cool places. And they love that stuff. Wherever it's human, they love to be in that mess, you know. Uh, and let me tell you, of course, the ones that we had in, in New York City, you know, were, were small ones, those, those little tiny ones. But when I lived in Puerto Rico, ho oh, oh. ho, oh, oh. those cockroaches, my God, flow, they fly, you fly all over the place. I, you know, I don't get along with cockroaches. I can tell you stories. Let me give you a quick story about cockroaches and me. That's why I know they're of the devil. I was preaching in Mexico and I was a missionary and we had a campaign going and I remember that as I was preaching the word of the Lord and, you know, I was, it was hot and I was sweating and, and I was anointed that day. Hallelujah. I don't know about that day, but I was anointed that day. <laughs> and as I was preaching, you know, uh, this stupid flying cockroach flies into the church. Now he's buzzing all over the place and people are ducking. Boom, boom, you know, they think that he's flying and people, ooh, you know, screaming. This thing is flying and then he would stop and they try to kill and he fly. And so I, in the middle of my preaching. Well, I know it was the devil. It can't be God, you know. So, so I'm, I'm preaching. This dumb thing is flying all over. This demonic messenger from hell is flying up and down. And he's die bombing on people. And, ah, woo -woo, you know. and these are people who are used to them. Can you imagine us who are not used to them? We'd lose half the church, Pastor. <laughs> They'd be flying out that door. But I'm trying to, you know, keep an upper, you know, stiff upper lip. I'm going to preach through this. The devil ain't going to stop me, you know. I got to keep preaching. So I'm preaching. Then the turkey, you know, decides to fly forward towards the altar. Now he's flying behind me. And so people are looking at me and they're going. And you know, he's dive bombing behind me. I'm getting mad. I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm hot. You know, I'm preaching, but in my mind, I said, mm, I curse that thing in the name of Jesus. <laughs> And so it's flying around, flying around, but I'm trying to ignore the stupid cockroach, this creature of the darkness. You can't ignore the creature of the darkness, because he's there to harass you. Isn't that true? 
Isn't that what creatures in the darkness do? They come to harass you. Well, this turkey was harassing me. So finally, you know, I'm sick and tired. Finally, he's up there somewhere, and the people finally coming down. All of a sudden, he dive bombs on me. And just as I was anointed, and I was, and I was just, you know, going at it when that turkey landed here and crawled into here. Now you know why I don't get along with cockroaches. It was about that big and he went into my mouth, whole. So what does an anointed man of God do when a cockroach just flies into his mouth? Are you crazy? Chew on it, you be nuts? I said anointed, not stupid, not crazy. I said anointed. You reach, reach into your mouth, you take them out, throw on the floor, step on the devil, and keep preaching. That's what you do. That's what I did. What do you do? Chew on it. What do you think? This is a piece of beer. Swallow it. Why? Are you crazy? <laughs> Let me tell you, there's always a creature of darkness that's going to show up in your life. <laughs> and he's going to mess with you. But we are of the light. Amen. We are of the light. The Bible says that darkness tried to overpower the light, but it could not. Amen. It cannot. Because light is more powerful than darkness. We are no longer of the darkness. We were, weren't we? We were children of perdition, but we no longer. We are children of the light. We're, we belong to God now. We don't belong to the devil. You know, we're, we're no longer children of, of wrath. We're no longer children of judgment. We are children of life and life and abundance and life eternal. That's who we are. Because we are in the light. We are children and that's what we are now. And I want you to understand that this morning. If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are in the light. Amen. That means you have power over darkness. Whatever darkness may be in your life, whatever darkness may try to harass you in your home and in your job, in your family, I'm here to tell you, you have the power because you're a child of the light. Amen. That's why I'm asking you, are you lit? Hallelujah. That's what I want to hear. See, the light of God is in us. Not that it's just shining upon us. It is in us. Ooh, big difference. It's in us. It's already there. You don't have to ask, Lord, send the light. The day Jesus came into your heart, the light came. Amen. Glory to God. And that's one of the biggest things as pastors we, we see, you know, one of the, our biggest Heartaches are the people who do not know and understand who they are in Christ Jesus. People who don't know what they already have. And how many times we see them at altars crying out for something that God already gave them. And they're spending time and effort and, and crying for what? You know what? There's some things you don't have to pray about. It's already yours. And as a child of light, you need to understand these things. That's why it's important to come to Bible study and the men prayer breakfast and to the, to the magnolias. Yes, I remember. <laughs> come to all the ministries. Why? Because the Word of God is being preached and taught and it's being put forth so that you learn who you are in Christ and what God has done for you and what you already have. Because you are a child of God you are a child of the light. Yes. And the light transforms us. Somebody say amen. Because I don't know about you, but when I was not saved, I wasn't a very nice guy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm imagine. well, again, you guys are perfect and you grew up in a Christ Christian home. And not, not you guys. I can imagine you guys were very nice. You know, you were the, the nice kids on the block. But, not all of us were the nice kids on the block. You know, we weren't the, the, the most savory group of people to be around. But I'm here to tell you, the light of God, when it begins to shine in you, begins to transform you, 
from the inside changes your heart it changes your mind it changes the way you think the way you see it changes the way you perceive the way you rationalize the way everything changes your and it begins from the inside i love that 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 scripture where it talks about christ when he was on the what we call the mount of transfiguration he took only three of his disciples with him the inner circle the guys who have been closest to him and they're up there you know and all of a sudden the bible says that he began to shine but it wasn't that the sun shone upon him the bible says that he began to shine from the inward out he just started to shine outwardly in other words what we see there is that the veil of his flesh was removed for a few moments to to reveal what was already inside of him Jesus is the Lord of glory. Now I said that like Bruce Lee says, heavenly glory. You know? <laughs> glory. What is glory? It is the manifest presence of God. His, he began to manifest his glory, began to shine. And it became so overwhelming that the three disciples fell like dead men at his feet. They, they just fainted under... You know, of course, bef not before they said something stupid like they always do. Lord, it's so good to be here. Why don't we build a tabernacle for you and for Elijah and for Moses? Aren't we that way? We want to be religious about things. Right away we want to build some type of crazy religious artifact, you know, so we can come every day and bow down three times and light five candles, you know, and put some holy water on our heads and ooh, get all mystical and crazy. You know what I'm tired of? I'll, I'll be honest. See some, something about the light when it transforms. Us. I'm tired of spooky people. <laughs> spooky people scare me. Amen? Amen. Listen, you can be full of the light without being spooky. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, now I'm Puerto Rican. I grew up around a lot of, you know, brujeria, you know, all that stuff, santeria. And those people are spooky. <laughs> spooky, spooky, spooky. And now I go, you know, when I got into Pentecost, uh, there were spooky people in the church too. <laughs> they floated. <sighs> How are you? I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> you can be full of the Holy Ghost without being spooky. You know what? That's why some of us look at some of us, in the, you know, people from the outside look at people are just kooky, man. They're just crazy. The Bible says we're supposed to be peculiar. <laughs> Some of us take that literally. And we are peculiar. <laughs> no, listen. We need to let our light shine. There's nothing spooky about the light of God. It's awesome. It really is. It's awesome. It is, it'll take your breath away, but it's not... Spooky. Spooky, you know what have it it, it it what it does is it pushes people away. People don't want to be around spookiness. The true light of God with, with, with demonstrates in love and in kindness and goodness draws people in. Draws people in. That's what the light does. That's a that's a sermon for another day. Let's keep going. What does the light produce? That scripture tells you it produces three things. Number one, it produces that which is good. You see, folks. We're not saved by good works, right? But when you are in the light, the light produces good works through you. Amen. Amen? Again, good works can't save us. But once you're saved, you ought to be doing good works. Amen. Somebody say amen. That's what yesterday was all about, right? You were doing some good works with a, for a good cause. And that's what the Spirit of God produces in you. It gets you involved in things that will bring healing, things that will bring blessing to humanity. And you, you need to be a part of that. The church needs to be a part of that. The church needs to be known as a place where it's involved in good things in the community. 
Now, we know there's a lot of junk out there that we ought not to be involved in. I'm not talking about that. But when there's a good cause, the church needs to lead the way. Why? Because we serve a good God who does good things through good people named Christians. Hallelujah. So the light produces that which is good. Number two, it produces that which is right. Right means, in other words, a lifestyle that is right. Folks, we know this to be true. We are all, what, a living epistle read by all men. You know what? What is your lifestyle saying? What is it preaching? What is it talking about? It ought to be talking about the goodness and the grace of God. It ought to be talking about the power and the majesty of God in our lives. In other words, what, what is the, the way you live your life? Not just in these four walls. It's easy to be a Christian in here. It's easy to love one another in this place. It's easy to lift up your hands and worship God and have a song in your heart in this house. But what happens when you walk out these doors? How do you live then? What's your testimony then? We all have heard the stories of people in church. They are the, oh, they're the biggest cheerleaders. They jump and they shout and they, well, they don't do this too much, but they, we used to roll on the ground. You know, back in the day, you know, we used to do... Man, I was down south. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen anything until you see Pentecost down south. When people literally jump pews. Jump pews? I'm talking about run on top of the pews. Yes, run on top of the pews. That takes some talent to do that. <laughs> I'm not talking about jump from pew to pew. I'm talking about run on top of the pew. That takes some talent, brother. That takes some anointing to do that. And let me, you know, and I'm talking about holy rollers. Ooh, ooh, they roll, baby, they roll. You got to, they say roll by you, you know. Whoa, whoa. If you let them, they'll hang from the chandeliers. This right here, that's a temptation right there, brother. That, those things, those are temptations, brother. By the middle of service, you have four or five people hanging from those things. You know, they look like the, the flying wallendas. The trapeze act going on. That's Pentecost down south. <laughs> but God wants us to be full of His Spirit. So we, and He produces a lifestyle, folks, that is... Aligned with His Word. It's, it's a lifestyle that reflects Christ in us. You know, I love the, the Scripture, and so many times we forget it. The Bible says, It is no longer I that liveth, but... But Christ that lives in me. Well, how did Jesus live His life on this earth? Was He not full of kindness and goodness and... Self-control. In other words, you look at the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Jesus. That's what that is. And if Jesus is living in you, then that ought to be your character. That ought to be your lifestyle. So that when people see you at the job, you know, you're not participating with the crazy jokes and, you know, you're not even... In fact, the Bible says don't even, don't even mention them. That's what that scripture said, didn't it? Don't even, don't even repeat that junk that you hear out there. You know, when you're at the job or you're, you know, in the marketplace or in some of us, you know, when you're home with your children, how do you act? See, the light produces the right type of lifestyle. Number three, the light produces that which is true. One thing that, that again, breaks my heart as a pastor and been able to travel a lot is the lack of genuineness in, in, in a church. You know what? You know, let me tell you what this generation is looking for. You want to reach a generation for Christ? Then be real. Be real. Quit the facade, the fake. People hate fake. And my wife calls it feca. Feca. <laughs> it's like when we go to Dunkin' Donuts, we like our, our coffee, we, we put in uh, Splenda. Well, you go to places, they have fake Splenda. It's a yellow, it's yellow, you know. You know how Splenda has the yellow thing, but it says Splenda? It's, it's, it's yellow, but it's feca. It's fake. It's not Splenda. 
<laughs> it looks like Splenda, but it's not Splenda. Well, there's a lot of people who look like Christians, but they're feca. <laughs> Fake. And let me tell you, one thing about young people, they will see right through it. Don't play. Be real. Be genuine. One thing about the light, it produces true. It produces genuineness. It, you know what? People know what you're trying, you're faking it or not. In other words, when you, how are you, sis? People know when you really mean it or not mean it. Love can't be feigned. It can't be faked. Love is real. Kindness is real. Goodness is real. You can't fake that stuff. And when you try to, let me tell you, the light exposes it. Now, fake. Eh, 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 fake. Feca, feca, feca. <laughs> the light produces truth. We ought to be, you know what? We ought to be real with one another. We need to be real with one another. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. It doesn't say confess your faults to the pastor so that he can heal you. It says to one another. We need to be real. With, we ought to know what's going on in our lives. We need to be accountable one to another. But you know what? That takes somebody who is genuine. Who is willing to be vulnerable enough to say, you know what? I got an issue. I got a problem. I need for you to pray for me. Boy, we need that in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's what the light produces. Because feca is of the darkness. <laughs> it's of the devil. We must now, what must he do? Now that we are the children of God, we understand. That's what the Bible says. We are the children of the light. Okay, so, but let me tell you something about the children of the light. You know, thank God for all the blessings and all the promises that God has for us. How many say amen? amen. I've heard so many different numbers. There's 300, there's 5,000, this. I don't know how many are, but I'm going to tell you. There's a boatload, a boatload of promises for the believer. Yes. A boatload. And the Bible says they are yes and amen. Woohoo! Glory to God. Blessings for healing and deliverance and blessings for, you name it, there's a blessing for it. Amen? God shall supply all his needs according to his riches and your needs in Christ Jesus, right? The Bible talks about God is going to supply every need. He said, you know, there's healing in the name of Jesus. I mean, there's, there's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's prosperity in the name of Jesus. I mean, you name it, it's there. God wants to heal your, your marriage. God wants to restore your family. God wants to save your children. Those are all promises in the Word of God. They're there. And they're ours. And amen. amen. But the flip side is, there's also responsibility. Amen. To whom much is given. That's what the scripture says. We need to be balanced, amen. We need to be a balanced bel a believer. You know, yes, we have the blessings, but we also have responsibility. And this is what it's talking about. It says, now, as a believer, yes, you are of the light. You're no longer in darkness. You're no longer a slave to sin. The, the curse has been broken. Hallelujah. You know, sin is no longer have dominion over you. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are healed by His stripes. You're delivered. You are blessed. You know, blessed coming in and blessed coming out. You are the head and not the tail. That's all Bible. That's all Word. And it's for you. But now, there's something you must do. See, that's what God does for you. Now, He won't do what you need to do. You have to do your part. And that is live like children of the light. Children of the light, well, you know what they do? They live to please their God. The Lord that saved them, the Lord that delivered them, the Lord that blessed them, the Lord that restored them, the Lord has done so many things. Now we need to live a life in gratitude to God, and we need to live a life that pleases Him. And that is our responsibility, each one of us as a believer in Christ. That means to do that, we need to turn away from certain things. 
If you're going to be in the light, you cannot be in the darkness. Amen? If you're going to operate and work in the light and do things that are in the light, that means you can no longer operate or do things of the darkness. Somebody say amen. amen. And it says in that scripture, we need to turn away from three things. First of all, worthless deeds. Worthless means, worthless means they're worthless. They waste your time. They waste your resources. They re, they waste, it's just a waste. He says, you know what? Quit doing that. They're unfruitful. They don't add to you. They don't add to anybody else. In fact, they take away. So why are you doing it? Hello. Amen. Got quiet, Pastor. I'm, well, let me tread here a little longer then. <laughs> that means I hit a nerve. Woo! You know what they say about visiting preachers and evangelists? We blow in, we blow up, and we blow out. And we leave everything to the hand of the pastor to take care of afterwards. <laughs> Folks, it's so true. There are some stuff in this world that's not sinful. I'm not talking about sin. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about just stuff that just wastes your time. And that is very individual. I mean, let me tell you why. I remember when I first got saved, how many years ago? 30, 32 years ago. 32 years ago we got saved. And at the time, you know, I was living up in Connecticut and, and I was big into sports. I was big into playing baseball. I was big into martial arts. I was into, I love sports. And so I was constantly doing that stuff. So I was constantly in this league and in that league and the other league. And I was always getting phone calls. Hey, we want you to come and be part of this team that we're, we're going to go play over here and we're going to go play over there. And so I was involved in all kinds of baseball, softball, you name it. I was involved in all that. Well, guess what? Is softball sin? No. Is baseball sin? No. Is sports sin? No. But I had a higher calling. I was saved and now, you know, filled with the Spirit and involved in church. But what was going on? That those things were pulling me from my responsibilities with the Lord. Oh boy, I'm hitting a nerve. Let me. <laughs> Got to say what I got to say. And what was happening was they were unfruitful. I wasn't getting paid for it. It's not like I was getting paid for it. Well, getting paid for it, but maybe, you know, you can justify it that way. I wasn't getting paid. It was just I was playing in this team, that team, and I was everywhere, which means you play on the weekends. Or you play at night. And so you're missing Wednesday night Bible study. You're missing Saturday morning men's breakfast. You're missing, you know, Sunday morning service. Why? Because you're out there playing ball. Hmm. You know what? I had to come to a decision. Again, it wasn't sin, but it was unfruitful. It was wasting my time. And so I had to hang up the spikes, hang up the glove. And say, Lord, you're more important than a round ball and a long bat. And gave it up. And they still called me. Oh, come on, man, we want you to play. No, I got other priorities. What's your priority? Church. Oh, what? What? Church. Can't you do church another night? Come on, you people were in church every night anyway. That's what we were told back in the day. Folks, those are worthless. They're unfruitful. You know what? You need to turn from them. You need to stop it. Stop it. Stop. Enough. It's wasting your time and resources. It's putting pressure on your marriage. You're stealing time from your children. If you can't say amen, say, Ouch! Ay, me quemo. Ay, me piso los callos. He stepped on my bunion. That hurt. I can be there for a while, but I'll keep moving on. You got the idea. Number two, you need to turn away from deeds of evil. Listen, if it's not pleasing to the Lord, if it's not according to the Word of God, you know what? What is not of faith is of sin. You know, can I paint it any other way? No. You got to say it like it is. 
listen, if it's unpleasing to God, then it's called sin. It's called sin. And the Bible says, sin shall not have what? Dominion over you. So let it go. It's amazing how many people want the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And they want to be used to heal the sick and cast out devils. And they want to be able to preach eloquently. And they want to be able to, you know, have this ministry that God wants to anoint. But you know what? You need to let sin go. You can't drag that junk with you. That is a hindrance. That's a hindrance to the move of God, to the power of God. You got to let it go. And that's what the light does. When it begins to work in you, we need to become children of the light. Children of the light walk in the light. They don't walk in darkness. So you have to quit the deeds of evil. And the last one, the deeds of darkness. I mean, there's some things that are just satanic. What does that mean, man? Let me tell you something. But pastor, we're children of the light. We're, we're born again believers. We, we love the Lord. We don't do anything satanic. Hmm. Really? You know, disobedience is like the... It's like witchcraft. You know what the Bible says? Woo! That's what the Bible says. The sin of disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. What? Read it in your Bible. Samuel told Saul that, didn't he? When you walk in disobedience, you open the door for dem demonic activity. Let me tell you what the Lord told. The Lord said this to uh, Cain. Cain harbored anger against his brother, right? He angered resentment against his brother. Why? Because when they both came to present the Lord their offering, Abel brought an offering that was prescribed by God. It was a blood offering. Cain, now understand Cain. Cain brought the best of the fruit of his labor. He didn't bring junk. He didn't bring rotten fruit or rotten vegetables. He brought the best of the fruit of his labor so that that would be acceptable unto God. He brought this wonderful spread of vegetables and whatever else it was. But God rejected it. Why? Because it wasn't what God was looking for. It wasn't what God had asked for. It wasn't what God was requiring of them. If you are going to approach God, you must approach Him through a blood offering. Abel understood it and did it. Cain understood it and decided to do something else. God rejected it. So what happens? Cain, instead of getting mad at God, got mad at his brother. Scapegoat, right? Because somebody's going to... He didn't think, oh, you know, I screwed up. No. No, no, you know, it was him. Ah, who's he think he is? Mr. Goody Two-Shoes. Mr. Holy Holy. Oh, okay. Ah. Well, you know what happened, right? When that happened, the Lord knew the heart of Cain. The Lord says to the Lord, Cain this. Cain, be careful. Because sin crouches at the door. What does that mean? That means that sin is always looking for a way in. Always. And if you open the door a little, he comes blowing in. If you open the window a little, he comes flying in. Like that darn cockroach. <laughs> You give it an opportunity and it comes in and it takes over. It's like the story of the Arab guy, you know, he's out there and he got his camel and, and they're crossing the desert. You know, it's hot, the dickens, in, you know, in, in, in the daytime, but at night it gets cold in the desert. And so he's, you know, so he pitches his small little tent, you know, and he puts his camel out there and he crawls into his little tent and he's warming himself up. All of a sudden he feels a nudge, boom. And he looks down and there's the nose of the, of the camel. He says, what are you doing? My nose is cold. Can I, just, can I just have my nose in here for a little while? All right, all right. But, you know, don't push. Next thing you know, boom. Looks over and there's a camel with his whole neck in. What are you doing? Ah, it's cold out. My nose, my ears are cold. Can I just warm up my... All right. So he goes back to sleep. Sun comes up, man. He starts feeling like, it's cold. Oof, what's going on here? Oof. And he opens his eyes and he finds out he's outside and the camel's inside. <laughs> you 
That's how sin works. In Spanish, it says, no le de cabida al diablo. Don't give any space to the devil. Because you know what? You give him an inch, he'll take a mile. He's crouching at the door. And so many Christians, instead of being used of God, are being used of the enemy. How many times you've been to church, somebody says something to you, that you know it wasn't God, it was the devil. But that person loves Jesus. Hello? He says, you know what? Don't even get involved in that mess. He said, don't get involved in deeds of darkness. Which are really based in Satan's attack upon God's people. We are children of the light. We have nothing to do with darkness. Every time you flap your lips about what this one did or did not did, you are participating in demonic activity. Every time you accuse your brother or your sister, you are participating in demonic activity. Because the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. We need to turn from the bochinche. <laughs> Amen. I'll say it again because past. We need to turn from bochinche. In English, it's turn from the gossip. Because that is demonic. It's satanic. And its end is destruction. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you and I are not supposed to be identified with the thief. We are need to be identified with Jesus who's come to give life and life more abundantly. All right, that was my introduction. No, I'm only kidding. Let me move, let me move, let me move. Now it says we need to expose darkness. We need to allow our light to shine, to begin to expose the darkness, to expose the evil, first of all, in us. Don't be trying to cast out the devil out of somebody else's life. <laughs> Come on. We are so good at pointing the finger. But like somebody says, every time you point the finger, there's three fingers and a thumb pointing back. He was without sin, let him cast the first stone. No, first the light exposes sin in you. Then your light shines and it begins to shine throughout darkness. But it begins in you. We need to expose the darkness in us. Expose the darkness and evil in our, in our lives. And then in our homes. Because that's what we have authority, right? In our homes. Let me tell you, some of us need to go through our homes and just cast out a bunch of garbage that's been hanging around forever. We need to get rid of some of that generational garbage that we've been dragging. Stuff that we've been dragging. It's been in our families forever. Hello. Some of you know what I'm talking about. We call it traditions and we call it customs. No, they were, they were nothing but satanic and demonic. We need to get rid of that junk. Afuera, afuera. Out. You got you gots to go. I don't know where you're going to go, but you can't stay here. You gots to go. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the truth. Let me tell you, some of the fetishes that some, oh, you know what, my grandma gave me this little, I know it's, you know, it's, eh, but, you know, she gave it to me and I remember, you know what, get rid of it. Because most likely that thing was taken to some witch doctor somewhere or some brujeria somewhere and they did a little thing so they would bring good luck to you. I was given years ago what they call una cruz de calavera. Which is a cross that has, is a cross and it has two things coming across it. Okay? That was given to me many years ago. Oh my goodness, I kept it in my wallet. Because it was, oh, it was given by my family member. Oh, you need to carry this. This is going to bless you. It's going to keep you. It's going to keep you. And I got saved and I kept it there for a while until finally the Lord said, Do you trust in me or do you trust in that? Uh oh. Because who, what you trust is your God. I'll say it. What you trust in, that's your God. So if you trust in that thing, that's your God, then you know what? Go worship it. See if he's going to get you out of your next mess. It had to go. It had to go. Trash. Boom. Goodbye. Understand what I'm trying to say, folks? Yeah. 
Some of you need to go to your house and just get rid of junk. Because there's some attachment that you don't want in your house. We trust in God. We're, we're children of the light, not children of darkness. We don't need amulets and lucky charms and none of that horoscopes and Ouija boards and, and whatever else, you know, 1-800 uh, astrologer. We don't need that mess. We know who holds our tomorrow. My tomorrow is secure. Belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need to expose that junk. Get rid of it. And we need to allow the light to shine in us and through us. And I like what the it says, awake. It's time to awake, church. It's time to wake up. Amen. Despierta tú que duerme. Y la luz de Cristo te alumbrará, dice la palabra. In other words, awake thou who sleeps and the light of Christ will shine upon you. Wake up. The day is far spent. The night cometh when no man can work. We need to get about the business of the Lord. That's what people of light do. They get about it, man. We got to get about it. We need to wake up. We must be careful how we live, not like fools. Oh, my gosh. Fools to the left of me. Fools to the right of me. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, don't allow yourself to be drawn into the foolishness of this world. Some of the stupid things that people do in church. Amen. My God. Some of you have been feeding yourself too much on what so-called Christian television, Christian radio. And a lot of it is just foolishness. You know why they thrive? Because when most Christians don't read their Bibles. Yes. Most Christians don't study the Word of God. Because if you just study the Word of God, you say, what is he talking about? What is she saying? Are you crazy? <laughs> Foolishness. Doctrines of fools. The Bible says, listen, we are to be like the wise. And wisdom comes from the Word of God. You, listen, you can't go wrong with the Word of God. You know, be careful with these. Oh, we, we just have a new revelation. Woo! The Lord revealed to me that what the Bible says is not what it really means. It means something else. Be careful with that. Be careful with that. Understand that, yes, there's grammatical things in the Bible like hyperbole and and you have uh, parables, and, and you have all these different things. And, and let me tell you something. Don't get all crazy over that. Those are simple, simple literary devices that the Bible uses. We use them every day. You know, when you say, man, I love my dog. Woo. Because when we say we love my dog, what do you mean? I love my dog like I love my children, like I love my wife? No, but I love my dog. It's a hyperbole. In other words, it's an exaggeration. Right? It's an exaggeration. Sometimes the Bible talks, you know, when Jesus said, you know, if, if your eye causes you to sin, I don't see anybody rocking around here with one eye. And I know we all have sinned. How come we didn't take that literally, huh? Some, you, you understand? You Got to use a little wisdom, right? A little, just a little wisdom. That was an exaggeration by the Lord, hyperbole he was using just to make a point. Hello. Read your Bible. <laughs> Read your word. Use common sense. Be wise. Because if not, you're going to listen, you're going to be, like the Bible says, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine that flies down the street. And that's not what God has called us to be. Oh, let me hurry, hurry, because people are hungry and there's food to be sold to them downstairs. <laughs> Take advantage of our time and every God-given opportunity. Oh. That is one of, the, one of the secrets to success right there. To discern that this is a God-given opportunity. Like my father used to say, Mire, no te tuve. <laughs> In other words, when the God-given opportunity comes, don't hesitate. You need to move. Amen? You need to move. He who hesitates is lost. <laughs> Isn't that what the, the, uh, the, 
people of Israel did when they got to the promised land the first time, they halted. You know, they had two opinions. They were, they were between two opinions, you know. And one was, the 12, 10 spies says, well, yeah, it, it's flowing with milk and honey, but the giants, the giants there, and, and fortified cities, and vicious looking people, and they're ugly. And, uh, uh, uh. and then two said, no, 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 no. We are more than able. We are more than able. To go up and take the country. But whose report did they believe? And they went around, around the same mountain, and the same tree, and the same bush for 40 long years until everybody in that generation dropped dead. See who hesitates is lost? They dropped dead except who? The two guys who brought back the... And they were able to enter in. Folks, when the God-given opportunity appears, you need to jump in head first. <laughs> Get in there because that is God's, that is what God is doing. You need to be a part of it. And you've got to take a time, advantage of the time because, listen, time is getting short. I mean, we only have so many years to live in this life and then we're gone. And we all know the biggest regret that people say, man, I wish I had served the Lord earlier. Why, isn't that what most people, I wish I knew the Lord earlier. Well, you can't get that back. So that means you've got to take advantage of the time you have right now. And let me look at this one. Think! <laughs> Pastor. Oh, if somebody would, they, they would practice this, we'd be all right. Somebody said this. You know what? Ministry would be great if it wasn't for the people. <laughs> we are in the people business. Amen? But people got problems. And most people have problems because they don't think. Think before we speak or act. Be quick to listen. Slow to speak. How many times this little thing has gotten us into trouble? Ooh, santo Dios mío. That's the sermon for another time. But he talks about you know what? Don't, you know, allow foolish thoughts to fill your mind. That's what he's talking about. Think. And just don't think carnally. Think spiritually. Think according to the Word of God. Fill your heart and your mind with the Word of God so when things have come up and decisions need to be made, you do them according to the Word of the Lord. Then you act. Amen? All right. Know and understand the will of the Lord. We're just, we're just, we're getting right to the end here. Folks, you need to know and understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, here's our problem. And most pastors, we run into this. People go, Pastor, I don't know what the will of the Lord is. I, I, I don't know the will of the Lord for this. I don't know. And I, this is what I say. Have you done what you know to do first? Because you haven't done what you know to do. Why would God show you something else? Hello. You know, some people want, want to know the will of the Lord specifically for their lives. I said, well, have you done the general will of God? If you haven't done the general will of God, don't even ask for the specific. What is the general will of God? He's going to tell you. You need to be full of the Word. You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. You need to be full. You need to walk in love and in goodness and kindness. You just need to do the basics. Because the basics is the foundation of the rest of your life. And if you don't get that right, you are, in, you are in deep doo-doo. You are in deep trouble. Amen? Because the winds of adversity and problems are going to come, and if you're not founded on the basics of Christian living and the Word of God, you are going to come crashing down. Let me tell you about doing specifically the will of God. He's going to call you to do things that are almost impossible. And they are possible because He does them through you. I mean, I'm, I'm here. I mean, he's going to call you to do stuff that you're going to go, what? But when you have a solid foundation, you understand that if God be for me, who can be against me? And that God will never leave me or forsake me. And that the God whom God calls, God prepares and God anoints. When you begin to understand those things and you say, Lord, if you call me to do that, it's because you're going to do it. And so I don't have to worry about it. I just got to obey. But if you don't have that basic understanding, I'm here to tell you it will eat you alive. It'll eat you alive. I'm here to tell you, it's not easy. 
sometimes to serve the Lord. He'll call you to do things that are not very pleasant. Who was the prophet, brother? He told him to walk with a loincloth on the outside for how many years? And it was, um, I don't remember who it was. It'll come to me later. Was it Ezekiel? He had a word, a loincloth on the outside. You don't wear your underwears on the outside. <laughs> how about the prophet that God called him, go marry a prostitute? My God. Talk about tough. And not just marry her, love her. And he did. Because he, he, his life became a, 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 a living sermon of God. much that I killed the battery. Oh, I'm sorry. I kept you guys here way too long. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm going to land. I'm going to land, Pastor. I'm going to land. I'm going to land. I'm going to land. Let me land with this last scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. For you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to the darkness of the night. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Let me tell you what the will of the Lord is. That you get lit up. Amen. Like a Christmas tree. <laughs> get lit up. How do you get lit up? We just read it. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Yes. Be filled with the Spirit. Continually, every day, every moment, get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Fire will light you up. Who was the, the great preacher who says, you know what? You need to preach like a man on fire and let people come see you burn. Come on. That's what I want to be. I want to be a man on fire and let the people come see. But let me tell you about the fire of the Holy Ghost. It will burn, but it will not consume. It will burn, but it will not consume. That's another message for another day. But you remember the burning bush? Moses came to the burning bush and this is what... This is what caught Moses' eye. He saw a bush that was burning, but was not consumed. Because burning bushes in the desert are an everyday occurrence. Hello. Everyday occurrence. It's the desert. We lived in the northern part of Mexico. We lived close to a desert. And yeah, in, you know, spontaneous combustion. Why it gets 110 degrees in the heat? Dry piece of, uh, you know, doesn't take much. It'll explode. And, it just, and a fire, it'll consume in five seconds. Look at New Mexico right now. The state of New Mexico is on fire. Because it's so dry. They're not expecting rain for another month. Terrible. But when it's the Spirit of God, what caught Moses' eye was that bush was burning, but it was not consumed. And when he came to the burning bush, he heard the voice of God. Folks, that's what it's all about. That's how you get lit up. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit flow upon you. And God will light you up and you will burn brightly in this world like a light. But you will not be consumed. And that's what the Lord is calling us to do. Let's get lit up today in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me right now at this moment?